All right, we're looking at the question of the day from day number one at the NIMSI virtual conference. Let's put this question up on the screen and talk about it. My name is Dan Limmer from Limmer Education. We've been doing this for some time at conferences. We try and choose questions that bring up some uh, conversation. We had some great uh, correct answers to this. So let's talk about the question. A 45 year old female has left sided weakness that started 20 minutes ago. She has difficulty finding the right words to answer your questions. Her vital signs are pulse of 86, respiratory rate of 14, blood pressure is 142 on 74, her saturation is 96% on room air. You should next. Now you can see that we had an overwhelmingly uh, positive response for choice D. 87% said we should assess her blood glucose level. No one chose administer oxygen by nasal cannula, administer oxygen by simple face mask, SATA 96, what we have going on here, we're not looking to give oxygen. So the two choices that we really worked this down to was notify the receiving hospital of a stroke alert. 13% of the people said that was the answer. And then 87% said assess her blood glucose levels. Now, there's a lot of concepts here that, that we have to, to talk about. The first is differential diagnosis. The fact that she has left-sided weakness, she has difficulty finding the right words, it would be very easy to say, wow, that's a stroke, let's call a stroke alert. And some people did. But the problem with calling a stroke alert without ruling out stroke mimics is that we could call a stroke alert and get there. Wake up the neurology resident, we're going to make a lot of people unhappy when they do a blood glucose check and find that's 37. The concept of differential diagnosis and the concept of ruling out mimics and doing these things say we have to cast a wide net, look at the possibilities and narrow them down to probabilities. The other issue here is that the blood glucose is something that we can fix. Imagine taking this patient all the way to the hospital, right? While they're hypoglycemic, forget about waking up the neuro resident. You know, forget about the fact that you've called a stroke alert when it wasn't necessary. The real issue, the biggest issue here, is that this is something that we could have fixed. We could have done the blood glucose level. Differential diagnosis says we should check the, the blood glucose level, and if it's low, give glucose. The whole concept of, oh, we can't give glucose if it's a stroke, well, that's not true. We can check the blood glucose level. What we want is for someone to be normoglycemic. We want it to be normal. If it's low, we can give them su some sugar to get them up to the appropriate level. Now, the other thing that I talked about, I referenced very briefly in the beginning, is that the National Registry is going to a one correct answer format. For years, the National Registry has said, we do a best answer. Others could be the answers, but one's going to stand out as the best. Now, I think that there's a lot of people took that as code for we're trying to trick you or something like that. I don't think the registry ever did that. But the registry now is being clear and saying there's going to be one correct answer. Well, I think we have that format here in this question. But because it's one correct answer does not mean the question has to be easy. It doesn't mean the question has to lack uh, critical judgments that an EMT or an AEMT or paramedic would have to make. You have a patient like this, you need to assess the blood glucose level one to make sure that they're not hypoglycemic because we can treat that and two, so we don't call in a false stroke alert. Now, if you're looking at this and saying, I don't know if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, why don't we just call it a stroke? Well, let's go to this article, uh, which I found on Journal Spoon Feed through Limmer Education's Foam Finder uh, app at foamfinder.com. And in here it says, um, we're talking about stroke, no matter what you think about TPA, um, you know, it's a physician thing, but it's, this is very, very relevant here, is that stroke is common and that there's controversial treatments, but what do we do for a stroke? The first thing we do is the ABCs and we check glucose. Why do we do that? Because it can mimic a stroke. Even these physician papers say 
it's important to check the glucose. I just put this up here in case you're a doubter, in case you're a person that says, I don't know, my student should just call a stroke alert on this. No, no, no. That we need to check the glucose. We need to be thinking providers that when our when we call a, a stroke alert, uh, our word needs to be good. So it was a simple question. I think it matches uh, clinical thinking. I think it matches the new National Registry style. Uh, and it does what Limer Education always tries to do, is to give us, uh, is to give you and your students quality questions. Uh, my name is Dan Limer from Limer Education. We have some stuff on here. There's lots of ways uh, to get a hold of us from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram to simply dropping us an email or going to LimerEducation.com. I'm looking forward to talking to you uh, for the question in day number two.